If you want to find the right girlfriend or wife, you have to become resilient. You don't have to become resilient because the process is so unbelievably complex or because it's so difficult to achieve, but because inevitably, when it comes to the achievement of any goal, as you know in your career or your business, there will be setbacks. There will be negative emotional spikes that you're gonna experience. There will be moments of uncertainty, moments of doubt. And if you don't have the habit of creating certainty from within, which ultimately is the ability to be resilient, then you will stop. Then you will settle for somebody who isn't right for you, just like I did when it came to the relationship with my ex-wife. You're gonna end up with somebody that you don't actually like physically. You're gonna, gonna end up cocked in a relationship that you truly don't wanna be in, or you'll end up alone. So you have to make the decision that this is a goal that's not just a should, maybe I'll achieve it when I feel like it, maybe I'm gonna do the online dating, maybe I'm gonna go and do the approaches. No, it's absolutely a must. In order to become resilient, the first stop is creating enough emotional leverage over yourself. Emotional leverage consists out of two main components, towards motivation and away from motivation. You first of all have to understand what's causing you dissatisfaction and how bad your life is ultimately gonna be if you don't achieve this. Okay, what has this cost you in the past? A failed marriage, a lack of happiness, time wasted, really think about it. Think about what it's costing you right now to not have an amazing relationship and what it's gonna cost you in the future. The more pain, the more dissatisfaction you can create within yourself, the higher your own willingness to change. Now, Gunther Schmidt, one of Germany's best psychologists, he always says that dissatisfaction is necessary and it increases our own willingness to change, but it does not increase our own sense of competence. So for us to feel truly competent and to have certainty in our ability to actually achieve the goal, we need to have a positive vision. We need to visualize, not from a metaphysical woo-woo perspective, but we have to visualize having achieved the outcome and already experiencing the positive emotions right now that we hope to experience then because that creates the certainty within us to endure the times when we're faced with factual objective uncertainty. That's the first thing. You have to understand what you're going away from and what you're ultimately moving towards. If you don't have these two components strongly set up, the second the first date is going to go to She's gonna leave you on red, you'll jerk yourself to sleep, and you're gonna end up alone and you'll continue with your porn addiction. That's most likely what's gonna happen. So, if you set this up correctly, by creating clarity within yourself and actually writing it down, what has it cost me in the past? What is it costing me right now? What is it gonna cost me in the future? Then you will get enough of a push to wanna change and then you add the positive vision component on top of it, which creates certainty from within. That is the first Thing. Now, the second component when it comes to resilience is having an environment that makes it easy for you to stay on track. One of my business consultants, he makes around four million a month, when he's asked why he's still working because he has all the money in the world, he says, well, it's responsibility. He doesn't have to work another day in his life. Why is he still doing it? Well, because he's responsible for 100 employees. And if you have that level of responsibility, if it's almost more for other people than for yourself, you will endure. That's one thing. You have to have an environment locally, as well as maybe online, coaches, mentors, a peer group, people are ahead, who are ahead of you, people are, who are on the same journey as you, who will motivate you, and maybe even some people who depend on you. So understand who else will benefit from you achieving this. In other words, who is going to suffer if you don't do this? Maybe you already have children. What kind of a role model are you if you're not happy? What kind of a father are you to your daughter, your son, your unborn daughter, your unborn son, if you're not making yourself happy? Remember, children don't learn so much from what you tell them, right? They model your behavior. And if you show up in this world as a man who's, this, who's dissatisfied, who settles for subpar outcomes, in one of the most important areas in your life, you are unconsciously teaching your children that it's okay to settle in that area as well. And you're gonna increase the probability that they will end up in very unhappy relationships as well. So if you don't master this, the probability that your daughter or your son will be in a healthy long-term relationship is also a lot less. So. 
Understand that there are legitimately people who depend on you achieving this outcome. This is not just about your immediate satisfaction, this is about your legacy. You will literally create a generation of cucks if you don't do this. Think about it. Did your father teach you this? Did your grandfather teach you this? Most likely not. Maybe you're lucky. Probably they just stumbled upon each other. That's why, statistically, they had a subpar relationship, a relationship in which they truly weren't that satisfied. So if you can't bestow these lessons onto your son, your son will be a cuck. He'll depend on dating apps. He'll depend on a referral from a social network. He'll end up in a relationship with a woman that he's not truly attracted to. And he'll end up pussy whipped because he won't be able to communicate his own needs in a relationship and thereby the probability that those needs will get met is also a lot less. So by you living out a positive example of somebody who healthily communicates his own needs, who goes after what he wants, you increase the probability for your son or your daughter or your unborn son or your unborn daughter that they will also be able to have an amazing healthy relationship because they model your behavior. They don't just listen to what you tell them. They model who you are more so than listening to the exact instructions that you give them on a daily basis. When it comes to environment, it's also important that you have accountability. Because if you don't make a commitment to other people, chances are you're not going to do it. How many years have you already wasted settling for all right dates or being in relationships that don't truly fulfill you? I had that this week. I and Fernanda, we were in France. I ate like a bit of a pig, so I gained like one or two kilos. So I realized I'm going to have to go on an every other day 500 calorie cut this week. If I'm not going to say it to anybody, I probably won't do it. So I had two options. Talk to my friend who's one of the best weight loss coaches in the world, make that commitment to him. Or I just simply made a Instagram story where I said, I'm gonna do it. And now I'm gonna have to go do it. Today I only have 500 calories left. I have an MMA session later. I will want to eat a lot more, but I won't be able to. And it will actually be easy because I've made the commitment. But as long as it had just been in my own head, I probably would have been like, ah, it's fine because I didn't actually say it. So making a commitment to friends, family members, mentors, coaches will drastically increase the probability that you'll actually live up to it. Because if you're a man who's successful in his business or your career or in some area, if you're a man of integrity, you realize how important your own word is. If you give your word, you'll have to do it. Come hell or high water. Now, every now and then there are exceptions, life circumstances happen, I get it, obviously. But if you make a commitment, it has to come true. So one of the easiest ways to ensure the probability, to ensure a high probability of you achieving the goal is tell somebody else that you will do it. There's two different schools of thoughts when it comes to the achievement of a goal. Some people say, don't talk about your goals. Other people say, talk about your goals. Now, that varies a little bit individually, but if you struggle with getting yourself to take dating apps seriously, Instagram, in-person approaches, working on your communication skills, working on personal development, working on confidence. If you struggle with putting yourself into motion, make a commitment, say it to somebody, and then have punishment mechanisms in play. So for example, what you could do is dedicate, you say, okay, if I'm not gonna do X, Y, Z this week, I'll have to donate $500 or $1,000 to a cause that I actually don't support. Not to a charity that you actually like, because, okay, well, I like, for example, taking care of dogs and stray dogs. So, well, worst case scenario, if you don't do, the, don't do this, I'm gonna take care of animals, which is a good thing. Well, but then you don't have the same emotional leverage. So if you make the commitment that it's gonna cost you 500 or 1,000 bucks that must be donated to a cause that you actually don't like, you're even more motivated to do it. So you have to understand when it comes to motivation, there's an internal as well as an external component. Gunter Schmidt talks about hypnosystemic therapy. There are hypno elements, elements within you, your focus, your language patterns, your physiology, that create your experience, that you create your mental and emotional state. Resilience and confidence is one of those states, but there's also a systemic component. James Clear talks about that in his book, Atomic Habits. If the chocolate bar is in the house, the probability that you'll eat it is a lot higher. It's not your goals that determine how high you rise, but it's your habits that determine how low you fall when shit hits the fan. Why do some people totally spiral out of control when there's a, cri when there's a crisis in life and other people it hits them, but they don't really spiral out of control? Well, because they don't have a bad habit of alcohol. They don't have a in addiction. They have good quality male friends around them, great and healthy relationships to other people. They go to the gym, they listen to personal development, they meditate. They have a therapist. They have structures and systems in place that don't allow them to fall below a certain point. Sauna, ice bath, meditation, retreats, whatever it is that you need, business groups and masterminds. The systemic component of motivation and accountability cannot be overstated. Create peers that hold you accountable. Get coaches and mentors that hold you accountable. Speak 
your commitment into reality and then you have to do it because if you don't do it, people are going to question your integrity as a man. So once you understand that resilience ultimately comes down to these two components, the internal as well as the external, now you can control these two factors. You can design your internal world by changing what you focus on, your language patterns, creating a physiology that supports you by taking everything out of your body that derives you, that deprives you of energy. For example, alcohol. Yeah, you feel fantastic in the moment, but then the next day it actually increases anxiety. It increases the depression. It is a type, I, type A carcinogen. It fosters the growth of five different types of cancer cells in your body, but you drink it. Why? Because you don't have the confidence to show up on the date in the most, in the best way because you haven't learned it. Because you depend on liquid confidence. You can't even have a conversation. You can't even approach a woman without being drunk, without being on. That is a skill set you have to develop because if not, again, you won't be able to pass it on to your children. So there's this internal component as well as the systematic component when it comes to resilience. So get a network, get accountability. And then the last component is continuous and ongoing learning because strategy, strategy is an important element. 80% of success is mindset, right? This is what we've talked about. Beliefs, what do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about women? Is it even worth it? It's gonna take so much time. All these thoughts that are preventing you from taking consistent strategic action over time, which would ensure you getting the result. 80% of it is mindset. That's what we help our clients with in detail. Apply for a free initial consultation if you want our help with that personally. But 20% is strategy. If your profile on dating apps just suck, it sucks. You're not gonna get great results. The algorithm is gonna realize most people swipe left on you. It's gonna down rank your profile. Your score goes down. Your profile isn't even being shown to the best people. You're not seeing the best options. Then you delete them. Then you get horny a couple of months later, you reinstall them. But you never get consistent results to create abundance to choose the right person from. Oh, how am I even gonna approach women? It's gonna take so much time. I don't wanna go to bars. You have all these mindset problems. You don't have the right strategies. So dedicate yourself. Make a study of it. The same that you've done in your business, in your career, in any given hobby. Whenever you wanted to achieve a certain goal, there was a strategy that unlocked something that got you to the next level. But maybe you had to try seven or 17 different things until you got there. That's why resilience is required because you'll try a lot of different things. You're gonna go on a date. You think it went really well. You got your hopes up. It's been a long time since you were excited about somebody and then she doesn't text you back. She leaves you on red or she pretends to be busy forever. Of course that hurts. We've all been there. It sucks. But that's when you need exactly the internal as well as the systematic components that keep you on track. That tell you if you live in the US, there's 300 million people, 150 million women, 15 million women in your age bracket alone. You only need one. Can you find that one? Yes. But you need to brainwash yourself with positivity every single week. That's why the last habit that I would encourage you to adopt is 30 minutes of personal development content every single day. Go to YouTube, type in motivation. 30 minutes every single day. That's something that I've done for 10, 15 years at this stage because you have to understand how your brain operates. Your brain naturally distinguishes all information in terms of or differentiates everything in terms of opportunities and threats. And it'll naturally focus on the threats more than on the opportunities because a threat taken to its extreme means death. An opportunity taken to its extreme can only be so good. There's only so much happiness and so much positivity and joy that you can experience. But a threat, for example, Fernanda walking very close to that cliff right there could ultimately mean death. So your brain automatically goes there and it's gonna start detecting what's wrong. Your brain left to its own devices is always gonna focus on what's wrong. It's always gonna create anxiety within yourself and that's gonna stop you from feeling truly resilient and confident. So you have to make a choice to focus back on what you have available, on the good things, on the things that are empowering. Tony Robbins says, what's wrong is always available, so is what's right. You have habits, of focus. You need to make a decision that every single day you're going to focus on what you can control right now. What can I control right now? What can I control right now? And by refocusing on what you can actually control, you will feel empowered. And feeling empowered over long periods of time ensures that you get the outcome. Take care.